My name is Hubert Baumeister and this is the second part of a two-part series on creating a Beeple process. In the first part we have created a Beeple process that takes an argument and appends a hello to that argument and returns that argument. So <coughs> we have seen how a Beeple process offers a web service to the outside. Now what we act what we're going to do is add or change the Beeple process so it, that it still produces uh, a prepends hello but instead of using its own append operation it uses a concatenation service that it calls uh, another web service. So first we have to create that web service because we cannot really start working on uh, the beeper process until we have the WSDL of that other service. So to do this we create uh, in this case a web application but we could of course create a new uh, beeper process and we call it concat application and uh, yes everything is fine here we create a new web service. Uh, this time we just use a Java program, concat service, and in the package concat ws. And now we have our concrete service and we have to just add a public string concrete operation that takes uh, two string po uh, inputs, input one and string input two and then it returns uh, input one plus input two. So very simple web service, we save, we deploy and we will see, okay, the application has been deployed, we are going to check this and look for web applications, yes we have the concrete app application to web service is also there so it is understood as a web service. We look at the WSDL. Yes, it can also be produced. So we're pretty sure that the web service works. Now we have the WSDL, which or the URL of the WSDL here. So now our task is to create in our Beeple process, Beeple module, a reference to uh, the WSDL. So we do this actually by uh, using here new and other and we have uh, XML and we have external WSDL documents. Now we have to get the WSDL and that is of course here uh, in the admin console we can copy the link and we fill it in from the URL and we say finish and he will retrieve us our concat or should have retrieved our concat app. Yes, here it is. Now here we select the WSDL and we put them here to the right hand side. We could also put them to the left hand side but that again means we create an operation that the people are a process reacts to. Now we want to have the other side we want to call a Beeple process. And here we create this query, create a new partner link. 
and in addition it has to create a partner link type. That was done in the WSDL wizard without our doing, it was done automatically here. It's also done automatically, but here we can actually influence this. Important part is that the partner service will implement the partner role. That is, the partner will implement the concat service. If we clicked here, then the beep of process will implement the concat operation. But that's not what we want. We want to have the other side. We want to have the other web service implement the concat operation. So we say OK to everything. And we have a partner link here. Now, what you see here is that in the original WSDL file, the partner link was not there. So the uh, Beeple module created a wrapper WSDL to just contain the partner link. So we look at this and we can see that we import the a local copy of the Concat service WSDL and add to it the partner link. So in the Beeple process, we now have to call this. And this is done by using the invoke operation. Here we have invoke. And let's put the invoke here. And again, if we put the envelope and put it out to the partner link, then we have ex actually established a call here. Now, we should actually see again here a red flag saying something is wrong here. And yes, what we need to have is input variable and output variable, and we create them. That is fine. So the next step is to remove our first assign operation here, because that was actually copying the input to the output. But now we want to have actually an assign operation first taking the input, then assigning the relevant parameters to the concat operation and then resigning the result to the result of the beeper process. So we have to have two assigns here. This uh, first assign for the input parameters and the concat parameters and then for the concat result. So what are we doing here? So we again want to put this in concat in here in the parameters uh, arg argument one and in the argument we want to have a constant this is our hello hello the blank and that goes to argument one and then argument uh, uh, the second argument will be our input that is hello world in the part and it goes to argument one and now we can go back to the designer here and we go to the second assign and there we have to assign the output hello world output here we have part one and that is of course then the output of the concat operation so we take this one and put this to the output and we have defined our beeper process. We receive a request here. We assign the parameters to the concat service. We send out a request to the concat service and it comes back. And then we assign the result of the concat to the output of the beeper process. Uh, so we save and we just check validate XML if there is any problems. There are no uh, errors here. Uh, there are some warnings, and I guess we have to take care of these warnings later. So we can rebuild the application. That is the composite application. And so we clean and build. Yes, and we try to deploy. It 
Yes, that worked. And now actually we can run the test again. Because we didn't change anything on the WSDL to the client side, so we can uh, reuse the client operations. And then we can see if everything works. And we can see here the output, the last output is exactly what we expected. It hello world it as a comes as a result. Now here we do the same with our Java client. We run the Java client and the Java client passes. So to just show you that we actually have had that Concat application was uh, important. If we remove deploy, uh, clean the project that is undeployed, this application, and then run our tests again, then we should actually get a, uh, an error message. And yes, here the application fails, and it fails because of a fault not handled in the people process scope fault name is and so on and that is due that the service was not available if we then deploy the service again and run it then it passes again